Erin Heberger here. Oh my goodness, I am so excited to be live tonight with my very special guest, Christina Whiteley. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. First of all, I want to know, are you a mom and sometimes feel like the struggle, the juggle is real, trying to crush your home-based business, but still be an amazing mom who is not like knee deep in your phone 24 seven. If that sounds like you, you need to stay tuned because this amazing boss mom is going to tell all of her secrets on how to be the best mama and the best business mama at the same time. So, oh my gosh, Christina, first of all, thank you so much for hopping on here. I want to see some hearts for Christina because I am <laughs> so excited that she's here. Because if you don't know Christina, you are in for a treat tonight. First of all, Christina is a top earner in the network marketing world. She has built two online businesses, two six figures, insane. She's also a best-selling author. Like, how cool is that? I am That's so crazy. excited. Uh, it's on my to read for Christmas break list because mama doesn't have so much time to read these days. But over Christmas it. break, I'm totally reading it. I'm so excited. Um, she is a speaker. She is a business mentor, mindset coach. And you guys, she, number one, she's a mom. And not only is she, is she an amazing mom, but she's an amazing friend. I have gotten so much great advice from Christina since having Ella. <laughs> I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful to have you as a friend. I'm so grateful to have you as a business partner. And I am just so excited to hear what you have to share tonight. So, okay, without further ado, I want to dive right in. Um, but I want to know what mamas do we have on tonight? So if you have kids, I'm curious, whether they're fur babies or human babies, I want to know what do you have, boys or girls? How old are they? I'm going to pull up my phone too so I can see the comments. Yeah, so we can see the comments. Absolutely. Yeah, on here. Um, so awesome. I want to know, type in the comments, as my phone is being so slow. I want to know, tell us about your kiddos. Oh, hold on. Let me mute my phone. All right. So Christina, share with us, please, if you would, your best business tips for the busy mama. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Erin. Like what a beautiful introduction. And, you know, I'm sitting there listening to all of these things that are about me. And I wish people could see behind the scenes. I wish that people could see that I'm not really wearing pants right now. And I'm wearing really <laughs> ugly slippers. I wish people could see the hot mess that my house is. I've got dog fur all over the floor. The house is a complete disaster. We are doing crafts for Christmas. My Christmas tree looked like Christmas crafts barfed on it. I do not have a Hallmark tree. Like it's, you know, it's so funny what you can build in a few small minutes a day. And, and it's also the, the things that you learn to prioritize, right? I remember moving into our house or our house that we live in now. And, and our daughter was one at the time. And she, I was standing her on the ledge of the window and she was looking outside and Ryan's like, her hands are on the window. Like she's getting hampered all over the window. And I looked at him and I said, is that going to matter in two weeks? And he said, no. So if there's anything in your house that you look at and you're just like, ah, my laundry's everywhere. It's piling up or I haven't folded. I never fold laundry. There's a pile, there's an empty or like a full basket of laundry in my room. It's been there for four days that has not been folded. I'm I saying I've what got I need. that in my room right now too. <laughs> like prioritize, don't sweat the small stuff. If it doesn't matter in two weeks, it doesn't matter right now. And it's also a really great thing to remind your husband of because often, you know, they've had a really hard day or they come home and you're at home and, and they're just like, this place is crazy. I'm like, yeah, I'll trade you places. You want to do this for a day and see how that goes, right? Like it, it's so easy to, to try and be the perfect mom, but it's also really easy to let go of because it's so much more important. And this is the first tip that I'm going to give you to practice presence. This is a skill that you need to learn or mom guilt will eat you alive and give you anxiety and give you all of the physical symptoms that you don't want to deal with because you feel like a terrible human. Okay. Mom guilt is real. It's not fair and you can have it all. You just have to learn how to be present in the moment. Now that can be really difficult. It's something that I've had to practice, you know, when I'm out with my daughter and we're coloring or we're doing Christmas crafts or whatever we're doing, even if I'm watching TV with her, even if she says, mommy, can you come cuddle with me? My phone stays in my office 
Because if it doesn't, I'm going to be on there trying to do something. I'm going to be trying to multitask because we think that we can accomplish so much more when we multitask and we cannot. It's actually a myth. Okay. So number one is learning how to practice presence. When you're with your kids, be with your kids. And the thing is, especially if you're trying to run a business from home, what happens is your kids come in and they interrupt something that you're in the middle of doing. And what do we do? We rush them out. No, no, no. I'm in the middle of business. I'm in the middle of doing something. I'm talking to somebody. Right. But what I've learned to say is, Hey, I'm in the middle of something right now. Can you give me two minutes and I'll come do whatever you want me to do, whatever that is, because kids, at a like at certain, I mean, yes, you know, under two, they need a lot of time and care and you need to have, you know, a schedule, which is the next thing that I'm going to go on to. But when they get a little bit older, they really, they need you in your, their presence for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then they're over you. Like my, my daughter, she asked me to go cuddle. Number one, I know she needs comfort. So I drop everything and I go cuddle with her, but I know that 15 minutes in, she's going to be up. She's going to be down. She's going to be sitting somewhere else. And I know that after that 15 minutes of cuddling, I'm going to be, that's my presence with her. And man, I would do anything for those moments, by the way, to, to be able to drop everything is such a privilege uh, that we worked hard for because we have our home business, but having that is something that is extremely important. So then I'm going to move on to having a schedule because like I said, moms like to multitask. So they're doing the laundry and they're doing the dishes and they're doing, um, you know, tidying up around the house or whatever it is. Right. And it's so difficult if you have not created space space and time for your online business, whether you hire a babysitter, you ask your mom or dad to come over and help with the kids. You talk to your partner and say, Hey, I know that you work all day, but can I please have an hour when you get home or an hour after the kids go to bed and then we can connect and watch Netflix together. Right? Because what happens if you're in a partnership and you're a mom, not only are you going to feel like you're dropping the ball with your kids, but if you don't cut out time to spend with your husband, even if it's watching, Watching Netflix for half an hour or an hour and it's cuddling on the couch or it's going over uh, an article or it's listening to a podcast together. If you don't carve out time for your partner, they're going to end up resenting your home business too. Okay. So they don't want to talk to you while you're on the phone. They want you to be present too. So it goes back to that practicing presence and being there for our family. Right. This is, this is so powerful. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but no, please just from going back to your first one really quick, the practicing yeah, presence, like that was something that, so going back to work was a big adjustment. I was fortunate oh. enough, honestly, thanks to my business that I was home with Ella for seven months and I didn't deal with any of the distance learning or any of that stuff. That's I got so to just nice. practice being a new mom and now going back to work in September, I'm a teacher for, if you don't know, and I have two hours after school with Ella. You know, I have pretty much from four to six. She has her bottle at 630 and then she's in bed. Like that's Ella time. Like I am not on my phone. I am not. That's something that was very important to me going back to school. Like I literally, I went from having all day to like, I get choked up even thinking about it. I have two hours with her. Like I am going to be present in those two hours. And then to your point about getting, you know, partners. I mean, I do have to share her a little bit with my husband. So you know, <laughs> be like, um, I could take her for 30 minutes and I'm like, okay. So I have those 30 minutes. Then that's when I'm looking, catching up in messages and things like that. But being present is so important because yeah. it does avoid, help avoid that mom guilt. Cause you know, you, you feel mom guilt going back to work period, which, you know, is crazy, but it's real. And so for me to be able to, you know, save working my business until she is in bed. Like it's just such a gift, such a gift. Okay. And communicating that too, right? Communicating that with your partner, say so that they understand that they're important too, especially when you have kids, right? Um, I'll be totally transparent. And and my parents, uh, my mom will probably watch this. My parents uh, are divorced now, but my mom's life was us as kids. And, and I, I don't remember them taking time to do date nights. They probably did, but I don't remember those things. And it was something that I really wanted to be present in my relationship about putting my husband first, 
because he's the one that's got to live with me when she leaves the house, right? So my husband first, then my daughter, and then my business, or then my life, right? And so having that uh, a schedule and communicating that with your partner, sometimes we have to ask for help. Sometimes we have to get up early in the morning before our family is up so that we can make time. Sometimes we have to stay up late. There are nights that my husband goes to bed at 10 p.m. and I stay up and I work from 10 till noon or midnight um, because I like working at night. I like being a night owl. That is my downtime. That is my time when nobody is talking to me and I have time to be creative by myself. And I love that time and I don't feel bad about it either. And that's the thing. So the other, the, and the last thing that I really want to talk about is having a DMO, a daily method of operations with an IPA, which is income producing activities. So when you are working within that schedule, if you only have an hour a day to work on a business, when, if you're working full-time like Aaron, then you have to be intentional with that time. So you have to be doing the things that make you money and not doing the things that don't, because especially in an online business, like we have where we're working on social media all the time, you're scrolling through and yes, you can get caught up in the scroll hole. Yes. You can get caught up watching cat videos. Yes. I can take an hour and a half on TikTok. Don't judge me by scrolling through. It's designed to keep you engaged and focused. So you have to learn how to be intentional with your time. So when you have a DMO and a daily method of operation, which I highly recommend setting, just the bare minimum that you're going to do with your business, because Aaron's bare minimum is different from my bare minimum. I do this business full time, right? Aaron has a full time job and she also is building a side hustle. So her DMO is different than mine. And so you, only you can come up with that, but it should be things that number one, promote consistency, growing your network and reaching out and talking to new people every day. And then learning how to follow up with people. You don't even have to be good at reaching out to people. If you're good at following up with people and connecting with them and building a relationship, you'll be able to crush your business because regardless of what industry you're in, if you build relationships with people, that's where your longevity is. Okay. So, so often we skip over this and we think, Oh, I'll fit it in on the weekends or I'll fit it in later today. And then what happens? Our day gets busy. We're exhausted by 9 PM. We're just screw it. I'm not going to do it. I'll do it tomorrow. And then what happens the next day? Uh, soccer practice ha happens or uh, music lessons happen or somebody gets sick. And then you're like, Oh, my day has gone out the window. Right. And you'll push it to the next day. And then what happens with people if they don't learn to have a daily method of operation and they don't, commit to being consistent every single day, they end up pushing things to the side and they end up doing their business uh, in a way that you hustle and burn out. So they'll like push all of their energy into the weekends and then burn out on the weekends and not feel like a good parent because they're not being present. So it really is, if you can nail those three things, practicing presence, having a daily method of operation that you can continue and do consistently and having a schedule that you've communicated to your household to make sure that time is available, I'm telling you, it will absolutely change the game in being a mom and having a home business. And then also that, that mom guilt in the middle, you won't feel that as much, right? Because you're doing, you're, you're doing both world, you're, you're in both worlds, but you're, you're present in both worlds instead of trying to juggle everything. Like that sounds exhausting trying to juggle everything. It really is. And that's honestly, if without these three things, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. People ask me all the time. They're like, how do you do this? Like, but I mean, that's my life. I've always been busy, but now, especially mom busy is different than any other busy and it's the best kind of busy, but yeah. like, I said, like I, I won't sacrifice that time for anything. It's too Nor precious. should you. And it's going too fast as she's already walking like way it's too fast, way too so fast. I won't do that. Mm -mm. Um, so one other thing that, cause I talked to a lot of, a lot of moms in business, and this is kind of something that ca has caused a lot of turmoil for people in the past. And I know you made a big move about a year ago, which selfishly I'm very grateful for because it's how we <laughs> meeting and becoming friends. Um, but can you talk a little bit about kind of what went into that's such a big decision, making a company move like that. And I've had a lot of people say to me, like, you know, kind of being in that position and asking for advice. And so I'd love to hear you were, you know, you lived it. I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's funny because I've heard so many times I wish I could leave, but I'm so scared to start over. I wish I could leave, but I'm so scared to start over. And I walked away from $20,000 a month to start over. 
and I wasn't thrilled about it. But if you're somebody who commits to growth, whether that's personal growth, financial growth, like if you're trying to work on your body at the gym, physical growth, whatever it is, if you're somebody that commits to growth, you're going to constantly be searching for people to up level with you. So in my lifetime, I've outgrown friends. I've outgrown jobs. I've outgrown work environments, right? I remember I got let go um, from a bartending job when I was 27 because I went to the GM and I was like, uh, you're trying to implement a cash out at 3 a.m. and everyone is wasted except for me because I wasn't drinking as much. And he's like, you cause too many problems. <laughs> he's like, you, you don't drink enough at work. You're 27, so you're too old. And now you're in a serious relationship, so you're not available anymore. And I lost my job because I was like, this cash out is a nut. Like we are missing money everywhere because everyone's wasted. And, and that was like, I got let go. Um, you know, and so I, I worked in a salon environment what that I absolutely loved. It was like a huge, busy salon downtown. Uh, and I was making, I maxed out in five and a half years at $36,000 a year. I could barely pay my rent. That's why I was bartending because I couldn't pay my rent on my 30, you know, I couldn't afford to live in the city on $36,000 a year on my own. So, um, I ended up that, in, that work environment. Okay. Crazy stuff happened there. Um, you know, the, one of the owners was sleeping with staff. There was a manager that I threatened because I was a go-getter and she put a glass ceiling over my head that I could never move above. And so I moved on from that. I moved on from friends that were partying. I moved on from friends that were gossiping. I moved on from friends that were settling because I knew that I wanted more out of my life. And if I was going to spend time with those people, they were going to keep me where I was. So when it comes down to starting over, I will wholeheartedly start over every single time if I know the outcome will be better. Now, often people won't make the decision. They won't make the decision to move on. They'll be in a really crappy situation, whether it's a relationship or a business, and things will be failing left, right, and center. So I, I do have to give a little bit of credit to like the entrepreneurial gene that I have because I see red flags. In business, in friendships, in people, I see things that are not going to work down the road. So it's like I see ahead. And if your paycheck is going down, if they're changing a compensation plan, if they're changing the ingredients on the products, if they're pulling products, if there's a toxic work environment that you are being bullied or you're paying for a rank and you're being forced to pay for a rank, if they're, you know, like if there's stuff going on in that environment, you don't deserve to be there. You deserve to be somewhere else where you can thrive and grow and be inspired and motivated and supported by people that want you to win. And there's so many people that are trapped in a toxic work environment. And that was part of the, that was part of the problem. All of those other things happened at the same time. And so I just saw the writing on the wall in the company. I recognized that there was something going on in our industry uh, that was very transparent because of social media, because of how people talk and that this, industry couldn't con continue down the same path and have buy-in because it didn't make sense. You know, um, I wanted, I truly wanted to help people. I wanted to make an impact and where I was, even though I was making great money, my people were losing money at a very quick rate and they, I couldn't promise them with integrity, the same dream that I was living. And so when you get to a point in your business that number one, you cannot stand behind your product wholeheartedly and say it's the best thing on the planet, you got to be out. Mm -hmm. Because if I couldn't stand behind and peddle my product to somebody because I didn't believe in it, you got to be out, right? If you haven't read Seller Be Sold, that's a really good book for you. Oh, I haven't read that one. It, yeah, because it talks about that. It, it talks about, you know, it talks, if you are not paying money for something, if you're not paying money for something, you are the commodity. You're on social media right now. I'm going to be real honest with you. You're the commodity. You're the person that people are buying advertising dollars to advertise to. That's why there's all of these people like us who've recognized that we're being advertised to and realize, hey, we could do a better job at this. We could give better customer service. We could really help people. We could make an impact in their health. We could teach them. This is a moment for us that we're going to go out there and provide value to our audiences and help raise the bar 
all together instead of just paying for an advertisement. We're going to help you. And so that's the way that business is shifting. And so if you recognize that, knowing that, you know, uh, I just had a mom brain moment, you know, when that happens and you're like in the middle of a track and you're just like, this is where I'm going with it. And then I forget that doesn't go away. She's four and a half. Okay. (laughs) So, um, so, so really it's like when you look at the decision that you have to make and you're looking, you're, you're banging your head against the wall and you're like, why is this not working? I'm working harder. I'm doing more. I should be getting bigger results. That's when I recognized what was teach, what they were teaching wasn't working and it was time to pivot. It was time to look for something that was different. And I looked at many different companies. And the reason that I landed on ours time and time again was because they had something different. They were disrupting the industry. They were changing what was going on in the MLM network marketing direct sales space. And they were pivoting to the gig economy. And all of a sudden now there's daily pay and there's a product that is an essential service. And you have this whole perfect storm of things that are happening, world-class leadership, technology, manufacturing, all of these things that we've beefed up because we are in a massive momentum with the company. And to me, when I looked at the big picture, I was like, this is a no brainer. Like, I don't want to start over. I don't want to walk away from what I was doing, but I'm telling you when you see something that you know is going to be big, like I'm like, this is going to be the, the next Uber. This is going to be the next Airbnb. Like this is on par to shift social selling, to shift whatever people are doing for marketing on social media. This company is doing it better than anybody else. And they're doing it before anybody else. And I would be so stupid not to hop on board and just dig in because I was comfortable because I was making a great paycheck. And like, I I just, I couldn't sit there in integrity knowing that that was failing. And I had the opportunity to plant my flag and build something significant that would make an impact with people who had vision and wanted to collaborate. It would be so silly if I didn't take advantage of that. And, And we all know that the thing that you need to do, the thing that will up level your life to the next level of life is a thing that you are terrified to do. It's the thing that you are so scared of, the thing you can't stop thinking about, but you're like, ah, you keep talking yourself out of it, but you know that there's something there. That's the thing that you need to do. And it took me way longer than it should have. It took me about six months to jump ship. But when I did, it was this instant relief went over me. And when other people jump ship and saw what we had, they're like, Christina, we have systems here. This is so easy. People want the products. We don't have to convince them. We have the best customer service. We have the best team. Like, this is just a dream. Like I literally am working with my dream team and I had to give up good to have great. I had to give up great to have legendary. And that's what I wanted. I wanted something that would create a legacy for my family. And I knew that I could have that here with the people that we work with. And so that alone was enough to make me move. And in my first 10 months, uh, I outranked what I did at the last company. And in my first year, I hit my biggest career month ever after three and a half years of being a top earner at that other company. So it was a huge deal to come over and, and learn how to do this all over again and to help other people. But man, it happened way faster because of the tools that we have and the products we have. Oh my gosh. I just have chills just even (laughs) hearing this. I'm like, wait, sign me up. Oh wait, I already did. (laughs) But excuse me. I love it. I just am so grateful to everything that you just said, but the same thing, like if we didn't have simple systems and you know, the plug and play, I couldn't do it. Like I literally was sitting feeding Ella tonight, her bottle. And I look at my phone when I'm done and I had $300 in sales sitting in messages. I was like, I mean, what makes me so happy for you? It's like crazy. And you know, if, for someone who doesn't know my backstory, I'm not going to totally get into it, but I have been in the network marketing space for a long time. And let's just say I spent a lot more than I made in my last two companies. Uh, if you can relate to that, please type me because I like to know that I'm not alone in that. I was thousands and thousands of dollars oh. in credit card debt when I joined this company three and a half years ago. I can't believe it's been three and a half years. It's gone so fast. 
but it's like nothing I've ever experienced before. And I always said, like, I was like, I'm a teacher. I am not a salesperson. My dad's in sales. My dad's in advertising. Like we'd go to, sorry, if you're watching this dad, but I, we'd go to like a boat show and he's selling advertising. And if to me and people that's your jam have at it, but to me, I'd like cringe and be like, Oh, and so that's why like, when I got into this, people are like, how are you in sales? I'm like, well, it, doesn't feel like sales to me. It's social but, sharing. Right. I'm like, I get to share things that I love. I get to share a product that has legit changed my life and it's changed other people's lives. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel, I'm not that sales person. So it's honestly changed my life. It's changed my family's life. It's given me time with Ella that I would never been able to have anyways, because spoiler, spoiler alert, nobody goes into teaching for the money and teach for the money. <laughs> not make the money that Canada teachers make from our last conversation. When yeah. I was like, Wait, what? You're like, yeah. what? How much do they make? I'm moving. <laughs> right. I literally was ready to jump ship and move to Canada. <laughs> not a joke. Oh my gosh, Christina, I can't even thank you enough for hopping on. Oh, Let man. me see value. If you got any value at all from this, I better see value in those comments because I am so grateful. I am so honored to be in this journey with you, Christina. This is so helpful. If you want to know any more about what we've got going on over here, just type info if you want in the comments or send us a private message, whatever is easier, because I am just so fired up even just being on here. And I love being able to help other busy women do what we do and really make their dreams a reality. So, you know, sorry, go ahead, Erin. No, I was just going to say anything else that you have to add before we close out. Well, I just, first of all, like, thank you so much. You know, I came into this company and I didn't know anything. And Erin was one of the first people that I started asking questions to you. And she was so helpful. Like I was so nervous. I already had a crew. I was a leader somewhere else. And then I came in and nobody knew me here and I was starting from scratch and, and everyone like linked arms with me and helped me learn the, the systems and, and helped me plug into the right places. And it was just one of those things that I felt like I was home. You know, like I felt like, like, these are my women. These are my mom friends. These are my people. Right. And I think so often, sometimes we discredit ourselves. We count ourselves out before we even try. We count ourselves out before, uh, you know, we talk ourselves out in our minds and say, ah, it wouldn't work for me, or I'm not, I I couldn't do what they do or whatever. But you know, this whole social sharing, you're never pushing products on people. You're never like, you're never um, having awkward conversations. Like people are either open to it or not. They either want to do it or they don't. And it doesn't really matter. But the beauty is you get to be at home, pants optional. (laughs) You get to be around your kids. You get to work this in your pockets of your day. Cause like, look at you, Erin, you're working at like, you know, when your daughter goes to sleep or uh, maybe on your lunch break, you're, you know, you're talking to a few people or on recess or whatever it is. And you can nap nation on the weekends. That's what I call it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you can build a significant income part time. And that's what people need to know right now, because this is the answer, right? There are so many people that want to diversify and find some resiliency in this crazy world. And, and the answer is multiple streams of income, because if one isn't working, the other one will. And if that one isn't working, then you've got this. And if that isn't where, you know, like if you have rental income and they're not in your, you don't have tenants then you've got this. And if you've got this and you know, it just, it makes sense to diversify. And we are in this culture, this slash culture where we're doing all these different things to make money, but we're harnessing our gifts. And before you count yourself out, know that the gifts that you have inside you, the things that you're good at, they're transferable in so many different ways. And that you don't have to look at this as like, I have no business experience. I have no sales or marketing experience. I have no, like, you know, you don't have to look at it that way. You can look at it as, Hey, I want to feel significant in my financial situation with my partner. I also want to be a mom and be present and go to field trips and take my daughter to singing lessons and do the things that are important to me. Take her for ice cream as a surprise once in a while. I want to do those things and I have the freedom to do them now. So you, you know, you may be struggling because you're in debt or you are not spending any time with your family or, you know, in all honesty, the the hardest thing for me was trying to figure out where I would find the time. Where would I find the time? 
But when I recognized that this was the very thing that I'd procrastinated for two years that could have, that could have provided me the extra time, that could have provided me the extra income and allowed me to shift gears and pivot my lifestyle. If I'd realized that, I would have stopped lollygagging a long time ago and I would have got into this and I would have started moving forward, right? And so if I can give that one mess, if that one message to the person that's sitting there watching this saying, oh, I'd love to do that, but I just don't think it's me. It's take the step and have the conversations. It's if you go to bed at night thinking, how am I going to make some more money or what am I going to do in my life to make an impact? Or how am I going to find a community of women that are going to support me outside of my household? You have the answer. You just have to take action. And when you take action, you might be surprised with what you find. And if it doesn't work out, so what? At least you tried. Mm -hmm. Because I, I personally live life every single day, like it could be my last day. I say my, I love yous. I, I do the best that I can because it might be, and I don't want to be at the end of my life with any regrets. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And even more importantly, which I forgot to mention, and I'm sorry for taking up more of your time, but what I forgot to mention was how important it is to be a happy and productive mom, to be an example for your kids, mm -hmm. because when you're happy and you're productive and maybe you're a business owner and maybe you have a career, you are being the example for them. You are their role model. You're teaching them what to do. You're teaching them how to overcome adversity. You're teaching them how to problem solve. You're teaching them how to create income out of the things that they love and you're teaching them how to help people. And I can't think of any better job on the planet as other than being that, that role model for my daughter. The paycheck is a great bonus, but being that role model is really the most important thing to me. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. My heart is so full right now. Thank you, thank you, I thank love you, you, Christina. Let me get a thank you in the comments because I am so grateful for you. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all. We're both happy to help. Just bounce information off. I love that. All right, thank you so much, Christina. And thank you for watching. I will see you later. Bye. Bye.